everybody, welcome back to Bish's RV. Josh the RV nerd here right next to the road, so apologies if you're hearing some road-like background noise here. Hopefully we don't incite any kind of accidents with people rubbernecking at the campers. Anyway, today we're looking at the 195RB J-Flight. This has been in their lineup for a long time here. And there's a lot of things like this where it's a single axle with a front bed and a rear bathroom, but normally you open the door near the front of the RV and you walk in right on top of the mattress. This one kind of does it a little bit differently where they, they put the entry door in the back. And as a result, that creates, I think, a little more kind of private, personal feeling front bedroom. And this is a front walk around bed, which is actually kind of cool instead of some kind of east-west quarter bed that you got to climb over one another at night. Now, this is an awesome little size for solo camping, but it could definitely be a cozy couples camper if you're a little bit closer, like uh, some kind of young honeymooners or something like that. That. A couple years ago, they finally increased the interior height on these from being like only 6'1 inside to 6.5 feet. So you can walk around inside of it normally. Although if you're my height, if you're a little bit over 6 foot or bigger, you're still going to have to stand uh, with your head in the skylight in the shower. But at least they do that. So many little builders don't give you a skylight in the shower, so you're constantly ducking whenever you're, uh, you know, trying to bathe or anything like that. Carpetless, ventless, easy cleaning, uh, pet friendly. That's normal on single axle campers. But uh, they, they finally, based on your input, uh, started putting shower surround paneling in this bathroom. And all I can say to that is it's about time. Now there's some other good qualities, some other kind of downsides to this. We're gonna kind of boil all that out. One of the major things I wanna point out though, is I don't think there's anybody that matches the warranty that Jayco's putting on their single axle little campers like these. If you're looking for something to get you started, but to like be able to be around for a while, assuming you take normal care of it, this would be a good place to start right here. So once again, I think one of the major differentiating factors on this one is that it has, in a way, almost a more classic uh, entry door toward the back of the camper, which is we're facing forward to backward right now, a little different from what I normally do. Like I'm basically sitting on the edge of the bed currently. A lot of builders of this floor plan they have the entry door right over here where the bedroom curtain is located. And I hear a ton of people say, I, I like the camper, but I don't like the door by the bed. Well, this might be just the alternative. Now, I'm thankful that I'm inside recording this right now. Well, inside the camper, at least. Because this is the first, uh, at the time of this recording, the first significant snowfall that we've seen in southern Michigan uh, so far. Now... Chances are, by the time this video comes out, we've already had a ton of snow uh, hit the ground. But at the time I'm recording this, the weather just went from 80 degrees uh, last Friday to it's currently Tuesday, and it's 30. Ugh, that's a 50-degree punch in the teeth. That'll kick your seasonal affective disorder in. You ever wonder if seasonal affective disorder is where the phrase sad comes from? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, down below here, sometimes people ask, is there storage below the bench? Well, one of them. The, the left bench that we're looking at is where your furnace is located. Although while we're down here, you see that wooden box. That's the wheel well and uh, a power outlet right below that is also handy. Now, this is a little bit of a, it's like a half knee knocking dinette, but it's also exceptionally sturdy because it's both posted in place and bracketed to the wall. It does a very good job of keeping itself where it is. So like if you're a person who needs to kind of, you know, push down on the dining to be able to, uh, you know, get themselves up, you can. And what's funny, the campsite window coverage on this is fantastic compared to a lot of more modern camper designs. Now, sometimes people ask me in my videos, why do the bre bed spreads always look like somebody was trying to fold laundry aggressively on them? That's because when I make my videos, typically I'm climbing all over the bed. And uh, when I'm doing action live on camera like this, I don't always get a chance to straighten out the bed spread. So that's my fault, not the factory's fault. I do like how you have good breeze window coverage all the way around here. And they've gone to a single decor this year. Last year, they had uh, basically the farmhouse decor and the vintage, I don't know, whatever the not farmhouse one was. And it's mostly still farmhousey, but um, they have kind of combined the two. I do like the power outlets on both sides of that bed. And once again, what's cool about this, it is a bed that you are doing a little bit of a butt scoot boogie to get around. But the fact is, you don't have to crawl over one another in an east-west bed. And it's not a Murphy bed. But let me ask you this. 
Would you be interested in a camper like this if it did have a Murphy bed? I'm kind of curious. I, I, I don't think Jayco has any plans on changing a very good selling trailer. I'm just kind of, in general, a little bit curious as to what you think about that. Now, it's a little interesting. The TV hookups are actually over here uh, on the kitchen wall, which seems odd. But if you are going to be sitting at the dinette, I mean, it's about as good of a place as any that's physically available in the camper. Or if you put it on a pivoting swing arm, it could switch between the dinette and being able to face the uh, the front bed here. But let me ask you, uh, you know what, I gotta, sorry, I just lurched the camera and then I decided not to ask you that question. So now you're like, why are you swinging the camera around, stupid? I, I don't know. I don't know at all. Anyway. Now, the one we're looking at, this is an absolute total base model. Zero options applied. They do have things like a factory solar package, which will add a 200-watt uh, solar package on the roof with a 30-amp charge controller mounted up there. Obviously, it's still prepped for that if you want to uh, add one later. And you know what? As long as I'm up here, let's go ahead and just start kind of taking a little bit more of a detailed look in the bedroom. Both sides of the bed have these nice little hanging wardrobe towers, and that's another thing that little campers very often suffer from a lack of. Uh, they don't have any good place to hang anything. Not to mention, this one has that privacy curtain for the bed. That's another thing little campers very often tend to lack. And that's kind of the funny thing. I see so many different RVs. Um, some of them do certain things better than other ones. I've yet to see the one RV that I think is just absolutely perfect. I've seen a few that threaten to be close for certain applications. I don't know that I've ever seen the one that gets all the way there, though. A neat little differentiating factor here in these J-Flights as well is that they are using pocket-screwed cabinetry. It's not stapled uh, particle board um, styles. It's actual screws into wood. Now, on top of the wood core, the lumber core, which is where the name of that phrasing comes from, there is a uh, MDF particle board fascia to which the sticker wrap is applied. So it's actually a little bit of a hybrid style uh, cabinet style and rail, but it's actually pretty much what you find until you get all the way up to some really swanky high-end luxury kind of uh, fifth wheely stuff. Um, there is an option for a 13,500 BTU roof air conditioner. It will kill that uh, ceiling vent that we're looking at right now. Um, and this will just, if I'm not mistaken, it'll just be like some kind of open face sort of cabinet kind of thing. They frame it in when they install that 8,000 BTU side mount air conditioner. Now looking through uh, a little bit of the kitchen storage here. Overall, considering the small size of the camper, I'm not really mad at what we're looking at here. The one thing I will say, I love the big wastebasket space below the sink. But I almost think they 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 didn't do enough down there because it's just wide open under the sink. So, you know, it's great for a big wastebasket, but it also has absolutely positively zero drawers and no shelving under it to be able to set like a little basket drawer organizer. You are going to have to come up with 100% of the organization below the uh, uh, the sink. I do really like, though, that massive closet in that back corner of the RV. In a little trailer like this, having a big extra hanging space or just the ability to, you know, those little, uh, like it, it hooks onto a hanging bar, but it's got like little shelfy pockets for like shoes or organizers. Little things like that, I think this floor plan uh, is, is really good for. Apologies for the camera jumping around a little bit. My gloves got kind of hooked up on it. Now, this is what I was going to ask you earlier. This floor plan only offers a dinette from the factory. What if it offered some kind of sofa bench or... What if it offered like a little dining bar and you could put your feet up on that foot, uh, on, on the wheel well, like a foot rest, and then just like a couple chairs or stools or something, or like a fold down shelf that could be a dining bar if you wanted it, overlooking that campsite window. What, like, would you rather just keep the booth that's here, go with like a sofa bench, or would you like to have some kind of dining bar and a couple little chairs? Now, a big theater seat and recliners, those are not possible. The RV's not big enough. The wheel well blocks that from really being available. But I'd be kind of curious to know what you, you think about that sort of arrangement. And you may notice it does have the peekaboo, I smell you door. And as long as we're talking about that, I want to go ahead and get one other thing. It's like, uh, oh, you're getting a nice look at me uh, in the mirror over there. This up here, it's a vent. I am baffled that it is not even a four inch fart fan. It is a nothing. It is just a passive air vent. That really shocks me on this. Now, 
based on your feedback, they did start finally including shower surround paneling in these, which I'm really, really glad to see. And if I could wave one magic wand, even if it cost a couple bucks, if I could add one thing to this camper, for me, I would add even a small power vent fan into this bathroom. Um, it probably wouldn't be hard to do something like add a Hangs Vortex fan, that's H-E-N-G-S. Even though there isn't actually electricity already run to that outlet, if we look up top here, you do have a, uh, a light in the bathroom and you could piggyback the power off of that to potentially power a bathroom vent fan. So that is a thing to maybe consider. Elbow room around that toilet's not terrible. Not a great leg room, but it's a tiny camper. And if you notice here, six and a half foot tall and I'm a little over six foot tall. When I step up into the shower though, my head is most definitely up in that bubble skylight. That's just one of those things that's going to happen. But again, how many little single axle campers have you seen me go through and review that have absolutely uh, no headroom in the shower because they don't even include a skylight whatsoever. The irony is those brands are typically including a power vent fan. Now, if only we could find somebody that would split the flip in difference. And if you've watched a bunch of my videos, once again, apologies for the road noise behind us, but if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've heard me talk about the fattening of RVs in America, how every year they keep getting a little bit heavier. I will give Jayco some serious credit on these little J flights. They've done one of the best jobs at maintaining consistent uh, weight factors on them. Like this RV that we're looking at here in its absolute base form is still just about 3,000 pounds on the nose with about a 4,000 GVW. Now here's the thing. I mentioned this is its absolute base form and we're looking at a Midwestern build. The ones built out of Idaho and uh, those built out of Indiana with the STX fiberglass and loaded up equipment package, they weigh more. And sometimes that means that you lose some of the available cargo capacity. And that's all kind of factors that you want to kind of think about. Um, uh, it kind of seems to shock a lot of folks sometimes when you talk about uh, switching to fiberglass actually adds weight to the RV. Because the thing is you're not uh, taking advantage of what you normally find with fiberglass. And that's the weight savings that you can get from lamination. It's still going to be a stick built camper. If you just add fiberglass on top of a stick built camper you actually add a bunch of weight to it. Um, it's it's actually the heaviest way to build an RV, but it maintains a lot of the benefits of a stick-built RV with a lot of the benefits of a laminated RV. So it's an interesting little kind of in-betweener method. Um, this, this ugly gray rusty pole right next to us here, that used to be the Haylet Auto Service entrance sign years and years ago here at my hometown facility back uh, way back when in a totally different time at this uh, location. Now the power awning on this is not massive, but they did, I think, about as good a job as they could have. And I do like the window tint that they have on here. And obviously you see that two plus three sticker. That's one of the major Jayco doing Jayco things that they apply to these. Uh, they have about the longest warranty of anybody out there in this class and category. Uh, two years of RV coverage and a three year structural uh, complement to that. Now the roof of these has been walkable for years, but a lot of people didn't know that because they didn't have any ladder or prep for one on the back. And you can see how they are uh, prepping now for a telescopic removable ladder. Interesting note on that, the manufacturers basically get that mount essentially for free. And uh, the, they get it from the supplier who's hoping that ladder mount generates extra ladder sales for them. That's kind of the knee bone to leg bone uh, of it all. Now they no longer have the full J Smart lighting package on these, which I'm actually kind of sad about. Uh, what they do still have though, thankfully, is at least reverse travel lighting and backup camera prep. And as we work our way back over here, you can see how it's a single sewer outlet where your kitchen and your bathroom all uh, empty out from this one single uh, termination point. Now, if you look at this again in its base form, the sewer hookups, they look pretty low to the ground. That's actually one of the reasons why you see those little triangular flanges sticking off that bumper. That What that's doing is it's lowering the scrub line. That's, you know, if you go over a bump, uh, that, that triangle will scrub the ground before any of this. So it's a sewer connection protector, basically. Now, if you get something like the Baja Edition or the STX package, it will raise everything up and give you some extra ground clearance that uh, might be pretty darn handy for you. Let me know what you like about this one. Let me know what you would change. Like if you don't like the way it's laid out, but you kind of want something in this class, take a look at uh, a, a looks. Yeah, do that. Take several looks at the links in the video description. <laughs>
I don't know what's wrong with me. But I'm going to leave you links, of course, for pricing and availability, as well as other small single axle campers that have like, you know, a rear bathroom, front bedroom, some kind of comparable arrangement to this, maybe done a little bit differently, because this is, most of them aren't done the way this little J flight is done. And that's maybe why I kind of like it a little bit. I'm not sure. When you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and stay warm, everyone.